Uh, I'm a Doc Epi. This is uh, Kevin Aberask, and uh, I'm here in Sioux City at War Eagle Park. Uh, this is uh, Thursday, uh, July. Hmm, I should know that, right? <laughs> uh, it's after July 12th or 13th, I believe. And uh, relatives here are preparing to welcome home uh, the children of Carlisle. We're headed back to the Rosebud Reservation. Uh, they should be arriving here shortly. Uh, as you can see, they prepared this teepee. Uh, inside the teepee, uh, there are uh, seven bears uh, for the seven children who are returning. And uh, there's a fire going, and they're gonna set up the, uh, the children there. Once they arrive, they'll stay in the teepee overnight. And then tomorrow morning, I believe they're headed out to uh, the Rosebud Reservation, uh, where there'll be ceremonies before they're interred there. But uh, I just wanted to share the scene with everyone. I'll have a story and photos and video later on uh, this weekend, but uh, this is what it looks like here in Sioux City. And uh, I'll pan the camera around here so you can kind of see what else is going on. Probably, uh, you know, 60 to 100 people here at least. They're gonna have a dinner tonight. Great Plains Action Society is one of the sponsors of tonight's event. A number of other people here here tonight as well, helping host the ceremonies. I'm just going to let this, uh, this video run for a little while. I'm going to walk around myself, but uh, I'll be back with you shortly. Uh, but I will let this video run. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Oh. <laughs> hey, just a heads up, everybody. That's poison ivy all along that wood line. So watch your little ones going close to those bushes. people here.
Good evening, relatives. Again, we're here in uh, War Eagle Park in Sioux City, Iowa, uh, awaiting the uh, return of seven Rosebud relatives who are passing through this area on their way back home to the uh, Rosebud Reservation, where there will be uh, ceremonies and a funeral for them, and they'll be interred. Uh, they're coming from Carlisle Indian School out in Pennsylvania. Um, I believe they started their journey yesterday. Oh, here we go. I want to welcome everybody here today. It's, uh, it's been about a week and a half uh, since we were uh, notified of uh, their plans to, uh, uh, the Shichangu's plans to have a layover uh, here in Sioux City. And a couple of us thought that uh, we seen that pretty quickly. And, we thought it would be uh, a good idea and tradition to host them and make them feel good and comfortable. So we reached out right away. We, re we knew who the, uh, some of the elders were, the THPOs, that, uh, the tribal historical preservation officers that, that went on this trip. And we were kind of aware of it over the last few years. It's been six years since they initiated this. And it was initiated by children Shitangu children. They had uh, they had seen uh, they had gone to go tour Carlisle years ago, and they had graves well, right along the highway, right along the road. And if you uh, they call it a headstone because it belongs where the head is, but some some cemeteries put the headstone at your feet, but these ones were at the head. So that means that the road went right over their bodies. And the children seen that and wanted to put candy on it. So they stopped the bus and they got out and they put candy on those graves. And they asked a simple question. Why are these kids right here? Why is this road right here? Can we do something about this? And I will say that this situation is a little different than the one in Canada because Carlisle initiated bringing these children home. I don't believe that lets them off the hook any, but they are footing the bill. They did initiate the digging up of these graves and they initiated before all this stuff in Canada started happening, they initiated this and the dialogue with the Shichangu people. And so where we're at right now is uh, the caravan is three hours late. They are currently in Meskwaki territory. And the Meskwakis have a blessing that they're going to do for them. And they're aware of the meal that we're going to have for them. And so we're going to initiate that meal. We're going to have the meal to honor all of you survivors and these Wakaija, these, these young ones. We're going to honor them, and we're going to pay respect. We lit a fire. We have nine pillows in there with little toys and a little blanket. And you're welcome 
as long as you're not on your moon time. You're welcome to come and offer a prayer. Put some tobacco down, put some cedar down, spend some time if you want. It'll be going all night. And then also, we set up this hochoka. And there's a, a we asked a, my relative here, Chet Stoneman, and my, my sister, Melanie, uh, to come and help us. Uh, they're Shichangu, they're, they're Lakotas and Dakota, and uh, they're fluent. And I asked, uh, I asked Chet to come a long ways to come and offer that prayer up. We wanted to, uh, we wanted to offer that opportunity for that prayer to uh, Shichangu, the Shichangu people of this community. And uh, most of them are at Sundance right now. The drums are at Sundance right now. And so we're kind of missing some things, but they're making their sacrifices and that's okay. And so we've asked uh, a Chet uh, to come and he's a relative. And then we also have uh, George White Thunder, who's here. I want to acknowledge you, George. Uh, George is a descendant of, of a White Thunder that's on that list. And so, uh, we wanted to put all these things together, all these different people. Uh, uh, Michelle, thank you for getting the kids motivated and, and putting, putting them uh, into action. Betty White, the White family, putting all this food together, leading, the, leading that, that initiative. And the reason why we're having it here at War Eagle Park is because this isn't a park. This is a cemetery. And we let white people come up here we let all kinds of people come up here and smoke weed, smoke meth, bring chicks up, bring women up here, bring men up here. And at some point, we have to reclaim. These are our relatives here. Michael Connor, thank you for helping pick up trash and continuing that on. And others, if you've had a positive impact here, thank you. We have a sweat lodge just right, right along that tree line over there. Chris Denny, thank you for helping pour water. That's all part of reclaiming. And so my thought and idea was why not have this here? This is ours. There's 50 acres here, 25 in the park and 25 untouched. So I see this as an opportunity, not an opportunity, but a, a chance for our people to come together in a communal space. We're gonna pay respects to loved ones coming home, but we're also gonna unify. Unify, have a meal together. That's, that's my dream. That's what all this is. That's what all this is. So I welcome each and every one of you. I don't know if you're all gonna stick around for when the caravan comes in, but I want you to know the chief of police jumped on it. He want, immediately wanted to escort, to help escort. South Sioux chief of police, immediately wanted to escort. And they have to be very careful being friends with us because I expect a lot. And this is just the start. This is just the start of my expectations. But I say, Padami, I will open up Pinagigi to them for, for, uh, for showing that respect to our relatives making their way home. And uh, at this point, I'm gonna ask us all to stand and we're going to sing the Four Directions song. And then uh, out of respect for this Wapaha and this staff, we're going to ask Andrew Whipple to, uh, to sing a flag song. We're all going to face this way. I'm going to shut off the video for now since this is a prayer song. We'll be back.